I exhibit, you're probably not familiar with the Seattle art scene. I'm, I exhibit in a building that's referred to as the 619 Western Building. It contains something in the neighborhood of 100 artists. And 100 artists, uh, you, nobody knows exactly how many are there because they come and go and they sub rent and they share and so forth. So be lots of artists. Every month there's a show. And uh, somewhere between 40 and 80 of those artists exhibit any one month. I always exhibit, but many of them don't always exhibit. And uh, the entire Pioneer Square area is involved in the art walk, and so at any given month, there's a hundred or more artists to be seen. Uh, basically, it's a long, hard slog if you want to see all of them. It's too good for everyone. <laughs> uh, I usually average, uh, so I have normally a 200 to 300 people through my studio. The building itself usually gets about 700 to 1,000 people through the building. Not everyone goes to everyone. One of the things I've noticed in the course of doing this, at first it was a big adventure. At first you have this thing, oh, geez, this is great, all these people, cool stuff. The people that show up are, are, are you know, generally a young audience, somewhat younger than this on average, and they come trooping through the uh, art shows. And over a period of time, it, it, the novelty of it for me kind of wore off. And I began to become concerned about what goes on with these people who are out on an art walk. Why are they here? Why aren't they just out drinking? Why aren't they out partying? Or why aren't they watching all staying uh, science fiction movies or something? I mean, it becomes a puzzle about what is actually transpiring. Because you think about every artist in the world, and every artist has got some sort of personal neurosis, thinking that their work is great. And so you have, you have the artist putting their Weaving, weaving the straw into gold and putting it on the wall, and then you have an audience that comes in and immediately reverts it to straw again for you. Uh, uh, you know, there seems to be very little response. In the, in the course of trying to get response from people, I've conducted a number of surveys involved, revolving the first one, uh, which went on for several months. Uh, I had little forms for them to fill out, inquiring about their perfect day. What would be a perfect day? And they would write down little things on these things, and I would post them, and I use some of them as topics for paintings. Uh, some of the, a couple of paintings here are perfect day paintings, and we'll see some perfect day paintings out of the uh, sequence I'm going to run through. What I'll be showing here is basically my gallery list. This is what I sent so to galleries for universal rejection, right? I mean, it doesn't matter where I send it, it comes back, you know, and there's no, no comment. <laughs> and uh, there's a great, great many artists that are involved in, uh, in work that simply cannot or will not be shown. The commercial galleries, of course, have got to pay rent, and they've got staff, and they've got certain venues, certain types of things, certain stylistic tropes that they specialize in, and I don't happen to fit any of those, and many other artists don't happen to fit any of those, and you have your choice. You can do uh, boats nodding in the harbor, and mountains that look like oatmeal, or you can do stuff, something like this, perhaps, and you may get exhibited somewhere, but if you do, if you're outside the realm of that, uh, it's pretty much a closed uh, circuit. I've been very discouraged recently, not discouraged is a good word, I guess. I've been very discouraged at the lack of feedback. And I've been brooding about this, and as a doctor, the doctor of metaphysics as it happens, but as a doctor, you, become, you take on the broader view of things, because you're dealing with philosophy, you're dealing with how the society is arranged, and it occurs to me that one of the things that has gone haywire, one of the things that is wrong, one of the things that ought to be fixed, is the kind of uh, slope-shouldered, mouth-breathing sort of shuffle that people go through on an art walk. Uh, and, and you don't see that so much in this environment, but because you're all volunteers here. You know, I, I was told I'm, I'm lucky to be appearing before an audience of creatives and sensitives. Right? People who are, people who are, even if they may not be creative themselves, at least they are sensitive to creation and willing to participate, at least to the extent of showing up, right? <clears throat> Whereas if you're on the art walk and you've got a mob of people milling about going through gallery after gallery after gallery after gallery, it seems to stunt their growth in some way. People kind of shut down and they're busy turning the turning gold into straw as you go through it. And I began to wonder about, what can we do to change that? In what way can we wake them up a little bit? Get them momentarily aware. Get them thinking about what's going on. And I found uh, accidentally that putting them on the floor helps. Suddenly we have people who are afraid to take them on the floor. You know, they would routinely have already ignored these. These have already been seen by 700, 1,000, 1,200 people who have seen these individual pieces. They've trudged by them. 
but they didn't see him until I put him on the floor, right? And all of a sudden, oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, oh, my God. oh, please, wait, hold on. I've, I've had to literally push people onto these things. They get them to cross the room because it's like, oh, I'm not okay. I don't stop the face. <clears throat> that, that's kind of an odd disjunction here. It's not good enough to comment on when it's on the, on the wall, but somehow there's something wrong with doing it when it's on the, uh, on the floor. And it's kind of an odd mental set. And I got to think, well, this is interesting. I can wear these things out, literally. I had someone take, some, take a couple of them and turn them into handbags, like shopping bags you get from Costco or Ace or something like that. Those didn't sell. We tried to cut some of them into strips and roll them into placemats for the table. That didn't sell. Uh, yeah, we're running out of ideas here, folks. So what do you do with this stuff? Because it's accumulating. And, and, my, and my wife uh, has this issue. She does not want to be a widow with a warehouse. So it's just, it's got to go. Yeah, get rid of this stuff. So in the interest of, I had this idea, well, what we need to do is we need to enhance the experience for the audience. And, and you're not going to voluntarily get them enhanced because they're already kind of worn down by the time they get to my show or anybody else's show. So I had the idea of uh, thinking, well, what could we do? Well, what we could do, maybe what we ought to do is, is, is do something to kind of enhance their experience, something that would kind of Buoy them up. I don't want. I don't want them to get blissful, but I want them to become, you know, critically aware and functioning. Right? I want them to kind of take in. Oh well, yes, I'm at an art show. I should reflect upon this momentarily. Right? I I might consider the larger picture than, oh hey hi Bill, how are you? You know? Or geez, how much was wine again? You know, this kind of thing that happens on the air a lot, which is all a distraction from the actual work. So. I, I finally started what I refer to as the, uh, I refer to what is in fact, the uh, Dr. Johnny Well Healthcare Initiative Foundation. And I've started in on some exploratory, uh, beta, or it's going to be beta tested tonight, it's been alpha tested elsewhere, it's beta tested tonight, uh, of a product which is a, a special form of specially manipulated, rarefied atmospheric gases. And you notice that when you were, when I was a private pilot, for instance, briefly, you had to, you damn well ought to put on oxygen when you get above 12,000 feet, right? And so, because if you don't, you get dizzy and sleepy and so forth. I mean, they, they control this for you in the environment when you're on a big jetliner and so forth. But they purposefully can make you subdued and sleepy by reducing the amount of oxygen in the system, in the cabin. And the, you look, run into a thing where I was walking down the street the other day, and a guy's, uh, guy's got looking a little pale and wheezy, and suddenly he's rolling around in his pockets, and he comes and he's got an inhaler, right? I went to some people's house the other day, and uh, the place smells really piney and floral, and I'm walking into their house, and on the kitchen counter is, of course, the lake or some such lab, whatever that spray can, and they just aerosol the house, right? Well, you notice these things, and I got to thinking, well, and of course they're doing that, give me an idea. Give me an idea of applying rarefied atmospheric gas that to the audience generally, which I will do in just a moment, there's a beta test, and you will all notice that you're being buoyed aloft and suddenly your critical faculties are being sharpened. You become more acute, right? You become a bit more aware of your surroundings. But I don't want to apply too much. I'll just give you a, a whiff of it and you can let me know later whether this is actually working or not, right? Because it's critical to me as an artist, and it's critical to the art world, with art surviving in this, in, into this next century, that we, uh, we have some way of getting people to participate more fully in the aesthetic experience. And I don't know how far it could be applied. It might apply to music, it might apply, who knows where. But I'll, I'll administer this briefly. Yeah, like this. This is a touch, a little too much. I'm not just not feeling bad, right? Oh, yeah. I'll you can tell me this so I can get out and take care of it. And then we'll fall asleep now. So we're going to monitor the results on this as we'll start our slide some slideshow here in just a moment. I also want to remind you that this product is available only by donation, and I can't be fully responsible for your use of it. You may think, that guy's a loon. This is never going to work. He's dreaming. But I want you to watch. Watch this. Here is a little bit. You see that? Now watch what happens. <laughs> you see that? There's proof positive right before your very eyes. Right? 
See, they're feeling better already, right? <laughs> I also want to warn you, ladies and gentlemen, don't do what I'm going to briefly demonstrate here. I cannot be responsible for the circumstances. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> As I mentioned,